Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news happening in mid-Michigan. Heavy rains collapsing multiple dams, forcing the evacuation of thousands of families. In the next 12 to 15 hours, downtown Midland could be under approximately nine feet of water. Three dams have now been breached in Midland County amid rising flood waters with conditions only expected to get worse throughout the night. This is extraordinary. We've got new video just in of the Edenville Dam that has been breached. It's about 20 miles north of Midland. Tim Pamplin is there with the night cam. Tim. A scene of absolute devastation in mid Michigan this evening after three dams break, flooding the towns of Edenville and Sanford. Residents say it all happened so quickly. Got home at 5.30, quarter to six, the dam broke and I lost my house. And everything in it, except the... Local 4 viewer Ryan Kalino capturing this video just after dam number two breaks, letting Wixom Lake pour into Sanford Lake, leaving so many hopeless. I don't know how to start over again. Not with everything else that's been... We don't I mean, have anywhere to go. There's... I mean, our kids, you know, I mean, where are we going to go? Absolutely desperate situation here. Two schools have been set up as the mandatory evacuation has been ordered for both Edenville and Sanford. As more and more debris makes its way down river, artificial dams are being created, forcing water into all the neighborhoods. We have our car, our, and our pets, and, our and a little bit of clothes, some medication. He's diabetic. Uh, the Red Cross, thankfully, we didn't think of food or water, but they did. So we, we didn't had have time. dinner. We didn't have time. So as parts of wooden structures drift off down the river here towards Midland, that town some eight miles away is bracing. That is the scene right now in Sanford with a night camp, Tim Pamplin, local four. It's awful. All right. Thanks, Tim. Well, just about one hour ago, Governor Gretchen Whitmer updating the situation in Midland County. Governor declaring a state of emergency to get immediate help and resources to the area. Please, right now, evacuate. This is going to be hard, and we are anticipating several feet of water in the area. To go through this in the midst of a global pandemic is almost unthinkable. But we are here, and to the best of our ability, we are going to navigate this together. A crisis now punctuated by disaster. The evacuations include the towns of Edenville, Sanford, and parts of the city of Midland. The Michigan National Guard and the Michigan State Police both on the ground trying to help residents evacuate. We know four shelters thus far have been open for anyone who is doing that. Uh, we've got all the information at clickondetroit.com. Well, let's get over to Ben, who is tracking the conditions in that area. Obviously, they've been hit particularly hard with rain in the past two days, Ben. Yeah, we're talking incredible numbers when you see some of the stuff that fell north of where a lot of these dams failed. Here's where the flash flood warnings are. These red shaded areas, those are the areas that are under the biggest concern right now that run through Midland County. You can see that there are additional river flood warnings south of there going into Saginaw, but obviously the situation just not as bad. Record flooding uh, levels on the Titabawassee, 33 feet. It's forecasted to go to 38 feet tomorrow, so almost five feet above a record level there uh, and then slowly fall after that. Here are the numbers that we saw. These are 48 hour totals. And again, a lot of this stuff fell uh, north of Midland County and then started running downstream. Eight inches there on our gray. East Tower is almost eight inches there in 48 hours. Now back home, we still have lakeshore flood warnings that we're watching. Obviously the situation not as dire, but we still have those east winds that are going to be with us overnight. That's until 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Two river flood warnings that we're watching for minor flooding on the River Rouge and also on the Huron River and Hamburg Township that are in effect as we speak right now. So coming up, we'll take a longer look at our forecast. It'll take us into the holiday weekend and more about the flood threat up north in just a few minutes. Guys. Yeah, and, all right, Ben, and of course our coverage doesn't end here. Our morning team is already on the way. We will bring you the latest from the Midland area on Local 4 News today starting at 4.30 a.m. and we will continue to update the story overnight at ClickOnDetroit.com. Now, the death toll in Michigan from COVID-19 has now crossed 5,000. Today, the state reporting 435 new cases and 102 more lives lost. 
For the first time in two months, some Catholic churches opened their doors for public mass. All churches in the Detroit Archdiocese will resume mass no later than May 29th. And another demonstration expected at the state capitol tomorrow with barbers planning to offer free haircuts to protest the state's stay-at-home order. As 17 northern Michigan counties and the UP get set to reopen on Friday, other counties where cases and deaths are also trending positively are pushing for consideration as well, and that includes Monroe County, which of course is part of the Detroit region, at least on the state's reopening map. But as Jason Colthorpe reports, some people think that's a mistake. This is not your ordinary bowling alley here in Temperance. Clearly, with all the volleyball courts, indoor outdoor activities, summer's pretty important. But it's also geographically snake bitten in that customers don't have to go far to find another place open. We're about uh, two and a half miles from uh, Toledo. Forest View wasn't much more than a bowling alley when Rich Kenny first worked here. As my first job was a porter. I picked up uh, uh, beer bottles and empty ashtrays pretty much. My first job as a kid here. But now as owner, he's turned it into a year-round hot spot. Definitely not the bowling alley of your parents anymore with all the changes we've done. He's used the shutdown to institute safety measures and make some major renovations to get the customers back who suddenly see open signs down the road in Ohio. We have to look at border towns uniquely different. There's no walls to this, but a, a mile and a half south, two miles south, they're open. We should all be allowed to open our business and follow the same rules everyone else, everyone else has. That clientele will leave to go there. They will spend their money there. And if this drags on for several weeks or even several months, a lot of that clientele won't come back. GOP state rep Jason Shepard is pushing Governor Whitmer to look at Monroe County separately. We're being lumped into the Detroit metro area if you look at the regions. And quite frankly, our cases are very low in Monroe County. Um, and I think that the approach would be much better if we allowed counties to figure out how to handle some of this as opposed to just doing a one size fits all. Each day gets worse. I, th you know, if we don't get up and running by June 15th, we might not be able to really pull out of this. The governor's office didn't have a direct answer on this situation for us, but she has said the data will guide her. Whether that means restrictions could be loosened for Monroe County, like we've seen in northern Michigan, we'll have to wait and see. In Temperance, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. All right, Jason, tonight President Trump responding after being asked by Ford to wear a mask when he tours the Rawsonville ventilator factory this Thursday. It depends. I mean, you know, in certain areas I would, in certain areas I don't. But uh, I will certainly look at it. It depends on what situation. Am I standing right next to everybody or am I spread out? And also, you look, you know, uh, is something a hospital? Is it a ward? Is it what is it exactly? I, I'm going to a plant. So we'll see. Where it's appropriate, I would do it, certainly. Ford's policy requires everyone to wear a mask inside the plant. The automaker says it shared its guidelines with the White House, but that the White House has its own safety plans. The visit comes after Governor Whitmer banned non-essential tours at manufacturing facilities. Whitmer's spokesman says she will not try to block the president's visit. With every state in the country at least partially reopening by the end of the week, Washington's focus turning to the economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, with President Trump saying he wants Americans back to work. We have to get back to work, and we want to open up, and the people want to open up. The president and vice president met with GOP lawmakers Tuesday about the next steps toward economic recovery. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell putting the brakes on another stimulus right now. We need to assess what we've already done, Take a look at what worked and what didn't, and uh, we'll discuss the way forward. Republicans have signaled openness to some additional measures like liability protection for businesses against COVID-19 related lawsuits from workers and aid for state and local governments with budgets hammered by the pandemic response. By Wednesday, all 50 states will have taken steps toward reopening. Connecticut is the last. This is the time to take a baby set, and start cautiously reopening. Those reopenings, a big factor in the White House recovery equation. But Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin was president at a Senate banking committee hearing about worker safety. How many workers will die if we send people back to work without the protections they need, Mr. Secretary? Mr. Senator, we don't intend to send anybody back to work without the protections. Well, despite the reopening as of today, at least 17 states were seeing daily case rates on the rise. 
Other news tonight, a $95 million settlement in a Detroit literacy case is on hold and heading back to court. Just days ago, as we reported, Governor Whitmer and the plaintiffs settled a landmark literacy case that argued every student has a fundamental right to education. The lawsuit claimed Detroit students were deprived access to literacy because of a lack of books, a lack of teachers, and due to poor building conditions. The Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals late tonight vacated the earlier ruling by an appellate panel, so the full suite of judges will now hear the case. Still ahead, Ford is helping to get a newly designed piece of life-saving equipment to frontline workers. Our Dr. Frank Me George will show us how it works and why it seems to be the perfect tool in the fight against COVID-19. Mara. What in the world brought out thousands of people who lined 14 mile for hours today? I can tell you what it's not. It's not hand sanitizer, it's not toilet paper, it's not meat. It is something sweet and only for a certain select few. All right, Mara, if you're just joining us tonight at 11, we are following breaking news from mid-Michigan where emergency evacuations are underway after several dams have collapsed from days of heavy rain. Just about an hour ago, Governor Whitmer declared an emergency. Evacuees are being sent to two nearby schools. The governor says Midland could be under nine feet of water in the next 12 to 15 hours. Stay with Local 4 and click on Detroit.com for updates. When the going gets tough, Metro Detroiters always rise to the challenge. That tradition of strength has inspired all of us at Local 4 to shine a spotlight on the stories that truly embody the spirit of Detroit. Join us Wednesday at 8 for a special event, from giving out life-saving essentials to sharing hope any way they can. This community gave me so much as a kid, so I just always wanted to get back to it. Meet the local heroes behind Detroit's most inspirational acts of kindness. Catch the spirit of Detroit, a Local 4 special event, Wednesday at 8.